if you give me the next 10 minutes or so, you're gonna see why this super boring looking spreadsheet has helped me make about $1,000 a day flipping digital collectibles, virtual goods, and how you can do it as well. So in the previous videos, I've talked about how NFTs um, is gonna completely change digital collectibles. And today in this video, I am gonna be revealing exactly why this thing has exploded and why it's only going to get bigger with the involvement of Disney and Marvel and pretty much all of the world's uh, biggest brands when it comes to um, collectibles. Now, the new way to collect stuff is digital and that has been made possible through NFTs. And if you're new to this channel um, and you don't know what an NFT is, it's just non-fungible token, which means that because of blockchain, it's now possible to create and collect digital stuff. It, now, these could be images, this could be videos, but have it truly unique so that it is really verified on the blockchain that there is really just a limited amount of it and because of that that is what enables somebody to protect the scarcity as well as making it into collectible now i am talking about this the apps such as nba top shot for collecting nba related nfts uh vv for collectibles such as brands like Batman, DC, Ghostbusters, Adventure Time, Powerpuff Girls, um, plus a lot more. And you're gonna see why in this video with Marvel and Disney allegedly coming in. But let me tell you why, if this was in court, hands down with the proof that I'm about to show you, it's the proof is pretty much overwhelming. And if you just watch the next few minutes, you'll understand why. Okay, but, but let's talk about the opportunity right now. Now, this is a spreadsheet. Um, and one of the things that I'm always doing is, if you've been following my channel, I love collectibles. I love collecting physical figurines. I love collecting um, Iron Man related products. I, relate, I, I love collecting uh, old comics, vintage comics. And this thing here is collectible. Um, as a collector, let me just tell you that the collectible market is a $3 billion industry. And if you take a look at the current opportunity right now, let me just kind of zoom in on this a little bit. You'll see that Vivi, which is the app that allows people to collect these digital collectibles. You'll see that initially when they launched these um, Batmans and Joker and Robins on the app, you'll see that the initial price was about, you know, $45, $50, $80, depending on um, the rarity. And some of them are being flipped for up to as high as $8,000, $2,700, uh, $12,000 if there really is a very limited amount, right? Or if it's an ultra rare. And the opportunity might seem like it's hype. It might seem like this thing's not gonna last. But here's why it's only gonna get bigger. Because right now, if you take a look at these brands, you know, if there was like a tier list for brands and licenses, yeah, DC, Batman, this would be like S tier. S tier would be like Marvel, DC, Star Wars, Disney. A would be perhaps I don't know. I, I don't know if I would rate Ghostbusters as A. I feel like it was great in the 80s. I lived it as a kid, but I think they are a has-been license. So maybe I'll put as B. Adventure Time, yeah, maybe C. I guess it depends who you ask, right? Um, but I can tell you that when they dropped Ultraman, Ultraman sold out within 30 minutes. And I can tell you 90% of people who were based in the US when they bought Ultraman, they didn't even know what Ultraman was. And it still sold out within an hour. And if you take a look, look, look at the numbers, like 9,500 units divided, uh, multiplied by $40, that's like $350,000. And if you multi, if you to add up the entire collection of the Ultraman drop, you'll see that it's about slightly over a million dollars generated within an hour. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. Now, if I were to add in a new column over here, 
take a look at this. Notice that as the base increases, as more people download the VV app, notice how when they first launch, the sets are only getting bigger and bigger, right? Same thing like what NBA Top Shot and other NFT collectibles are doing. They start off initially small, but as the user base grows, I wouldn't say it's linear, but they would progressively also grow the amount of units that's being released. So if you take a look at the last drop for Ultraman, which was the last drop, it was for 9,500 units at $39.99, whereas the first common drop was for 7,500 units at $80. So if I were to do a quick formula, okay, so that we can kind of map out how much sales that they're doing, this formula would be, if I remember Excel correctly, it would be this multiplied by this, okay, in order to estimate how much the drop is worth, okay? So all I'm going to do is, I'm gonna create a new column and this is gonna blow your mind, okay? I am going to just drag this entire formula down so you can see how much money VV has been making, okay? Now, take a look at this. In this last Ultraman drop, 380K multiplied by 324K multiplied, eh, not multiplied, you know, add it, you know, add in 300K plus 300K plus 200K. That's like a million dollars, right? And if you were to see these drops over here, you will be able to see that if you were VV and if you had these big brands and licenses, wouldn't you agree that you would wait and hold? And rather than announcing all the big brands up front, you would keep the really big S tier, right? Your Disney, Marvel brands until the community grows to a much bigger, sizable uh, community before you release the big one. Okay, so well, let's 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 take a look at some of their VV licenses. Okay, so you'll see that officially, okay, they have Cartoon Network and Powerpuff Girls and Toki Doki and Star Trek, which I would say Star Trek is probably tier A or tier S, right? They've got. Capcom, Street Fighter. Now, these are brands that chances are if you're born in the 80s, it's got a lot of nostalgia, especially you played Street Fighter, okay? But, and they've got Warner Brothers, but this is the thing that makes it serious, okay? That's That I believe is just gonna blow everything up, okay? Now, all these brands like Pokemon, now, if you see the person that's sitting on head of licensing, Alfred Khan, you'll know that he is literally the person that brought Pokemon outside of Japan. So he is, I'm pretty sure, is going to be eventually bringing Pokemon in. But again, this is not confirmed. However, let me tell you something that is confirmed, okay? That makes it all very exciting. So I am currently at the United States Patent and Trademark Office, the website, okay? And if you were to take a look at this reference number, okay? You can even type it out yourself if you want to, do, if you, want to you know, double check and confirm. But you will see that there is a patent that is submitted on January the 9th, 2020. And you know what it looks like? If I click on specimen, it looks like this. What do you think this is? Now, first of all, a couple of things, okay? This is a company that specializes in licensing a submission to the United States Patent and Trademark Office with Ant-Man as the backdrop here with the Avengers Endgame as the low here. Now, this doesn't confirm anything, but just looking at this evidence-wise, I would say that if you were to put this in terms of percentage that chances are they probably have Marvel as one of their licenses. You know what? I'm pretty sure that the deal's done, but they haven't announced it yet for, well, a lot of different reasons. Uh, marketing being one of them, because if, again, if you're to take a look at all of their additions, the last thing they want to do is to release, you know, an Iron Man or uh, ultra rare with only 1,750 units, right? Chances are they want to build up the hype with other grade A or B licenses. And perhaps only in a few months from now, when the hype is at its peak, I don't, guys, right now everything is hyped out. You can see that all of the selling price is about 10 to 20 times more, right? It's being flipped. And 
This is why if you are buying these drops when it releases and when you are flipping them, it is only going to get you, you know, 5, 10 X your returns. And something that I've mentioned in the past video, so you might be thinking, but Ping Jun, sounds like, you know, um, what if I were to, you know, to queue up for these drops sounds hard. It's, it's going to be highly dependent on luck. True. And that is where, to me, this is where I want to be able to invest in the coin that powers the entire economy of VV. And this would be the OMI token. Now, this is not financial advice. Do your own due diligence. But personally, I have put in, let's just say, a lot of money into this coin. And whether you buy it or not, you know, it's, it's not going to make a difference for me. I'm holding this long term because I do believe that when the big brands comes in, I mean, the big brands are already in. There's already Cartoon Network and DC. But when more licenses come on this platform, there's a couple of things to happen, okay? Right now, this coin is priced at one cent. And this is literally after they just got listed today on this platform called Uniswap. And what, how, how it works is whenever a transaction happens, okay, I'm not going to borrow even tokenomics, but ultimately, whenever somebody buys stuff off the app store, right, on the app, the equal amount of tokens is burned, which means removed, taken out of circulation whenever people buy. So, so what does this mean? It means that, for example, this Ultraman drop, when they dropped this and when there was about a million dollars worth of sales, okay, what that means is they are going to take a million dollars worth of OMI coins and take them out of circulation, okay, which means there's going to be less coins in circulation. And as a direct result of that, over time, these coins are only going to be more and more scarce. Now, this also does not take into account that right now the marketplace is still down. It's been down for about a month. They took it um, so that off the marketplace. So whenever people transact in the secondary market, that is also going to be causing coins to be burnt in the ecosystem. And that is why I am very bullish on this. Again, not financial advice, just something that I'm personally doing um, that I believe that over the long run, when these deals come in, if they come in, whether it's Game of Thrones, whether it's Marvel, whether it is all these, that's not yet confirmed. But if they do, like if Star Wars, Nintendo, Marvel comes in or Pokemon, it's game over. And again, I believe that just this sign here alone just tells me that this is just the start of this entire digital collection slash NFT space. And if you are in on this right now, and if you're flipping these collectibles, and if you are aware of these prices, and you know exactly how much they're worth, and you're buying and reselling them, there is just immense and tremendous opportunity in this space. So one of the things that I am going to be doing is if you want to be able to have this price list so they can play around with it based on what I'm showing you here, I'm going to put this up in the description box below so that you can start your journey of understanding digital collectibles if this is something that you are interested in embarking on. Okay, so do smash the like button if you've found value because it does help the channel out and, and have YouTube recommend this to more people. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are. And as always, if you want to be updated with the latest techniques, whether it's on sales, marketing, making money online, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more future videos just like this one.